Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. So last week I did a little Q&A on my Instagram account to get some video ideas and this was one of the topic that came up the most. So a little intro before we get started. I used the 2019 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of RAM and 2.4 gigahertz processor with 8 core Intel Core i9 and it's got 500 gigs of storage. So I have done an entire video reviewing my Intel MacBook Pro whether it's worth buying in 2022 or not. Make sure to check it out once you finish watching this video. So I have broken down my apps into mainly three categories depending on how I use them creativity productivity and programming so on the creativity front i have few apps from the adobe creative cloud suite the first one on the list is premiere pro premiere pro is a very powerful video editing platform i'm still learning my way around it and how to use the software well i started off learning video editing on imovies and wanted to step up my first choice was final cut pro but since you have to pay for it i jumped onto premiere pro which i have a free licensing from work I'm taking a Skillshare course by Ali Abdal to learn video editing on Premiere Pro, finally hoping to up my game. Next on the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, we have Photoshop and Lightroom. I use Photoshop and Lightroom for mainly editing my pictures. I have some of my personal presets on Lightroom that I often use and I use Lightroom to do a little bit of tweaking here and there to give the pictures a bit more classy look. I also use Lightroom on my phone which syncs across all the devices. On Photoshop, I mainly use to create my thumbnails, add some text to it and do a little bit of cleaning. Next, on the creativity side, we have Canva. These days, instead of Photoshop, I mainly use Canva for my thumbnails since it's way easier to write some cool text, add some elements like logos and do so many basic things. They also have a Mac or Windows desktop app if you're into that. And of course, you can also use their web version, which I often use. So on the productivity front, first one on the list, I have Zoom. Since my work mostly uses WebEx or Teams, I use Zoom for all the calls outside my work. On Zoom, it's very easy to set up a quick call and I still use the free version since it helps me keep check on the 40 minutes time limit and making the calls more intentional. Next one on the list, I have Apple Music. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. Music listeners are always torn between Apple Music and Spotify. I personally like using Apple Music mainly because I got used to it and it's also synced between all my other devices. I have made some of my playlists here for my workouts, chill and other vibes. My friends always suggest that Spotify has better playlist recommendations so I definitely need to try it out. Also, if you have any playlist recommendations, do leave them in the comments below. Last but not the least on the productivity side, I have Notion. I think if you go to YouTube, everyone has got a video on their Notion setup. I think Notion is one of the best one out there in their niche. I use Notion mainly for YouTube content planning and note taking and also for some light journaling. Journaling is something I recently picked up. I write about things that I'm going to accomplish that day, things I'm grateful for and so on. And on the YouTube side, I have all the video ideas in one place, scripts, everything organized on a board. I don't have the most advanced Notion boards, but hey, it gets things done. Next, on the coding side, the first one on my list is VS Code. I know VS Code is the most popular and obvious choice as a code editor for many of you watching this. It's just so much easier to use and I feel like it's light on your laptop compared to something like IntelliJ. And the best part of VS Code is that there are tons of extensions that you can use to improve your work and productivity. Second one on my list is GitHub Desktop. I use GitHub on my both personal and work projects. So GitHub Desktop is a very powerful app where you can commit, push, pull, cherry pick and do all those fundamental Git operations within a few clicks and drag and drops instead of tedious terminal commands. Next up, we have Postman. Postman is an API platform for developers to design, build, test and iterate their APIs. I usually use Postman for my work when we have integrations between different cloud or external services. For example, recently we had to do an integration between Salesforce Cloud and SAP Cloud, and it was so much easier to test the endpoints, visualize the data received, sent, etc. Last one on my list on the coding side is Responsively. Responsively helps you view different screen sizes while you do front-end development. I have not used it much recently since my work was mainly focused on back-end, but this is a great tool to test your UI or your front-end on different screen sizes like mobile, tablets, iPad, or even monitor screens. 
So I hope this video was helpful. Hopefully there are some apps that you can use in your daily workflow or daily tasks. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to you next week. Cheers. <laughs>